I could go out there. No, no, thanks. You can't do that, Dennis. Thank you. It's his funeral. I know, I know. Mr. Shepard. Romaine. Oh, Romaine. Thanks for coming, Shirley. I'm so sorry. I know.
You've got mail. Hey, Judy, over here. Hi, Dennis. Hey, Dennis, we got a picture of you and Shepard. Just one picture. Hey, stranger. Welcome home. Dennis, what are they doing here? Oh, believe me, they weren't invited. Dennis, will you be after Jeff, Chelsea, and Kenny? How's your flight? Just a few comments, Mr. Mr. Shepard. Well, I'm still not as good at this as you Judy, are. Judy, Dennis, will you still be seeking the death penalty? Dennis, can you give us a smile? Dennis, over here. Don't glare. Judy, Dennis, I'd love yeah. a shot of you two together. Look like a mugshot when it's Judy, printed. Judy, this way. Jesus, it's been like this for you all year. Excuse me, Mr. Shepard. Only when you want some privacy. Mr. Shepard. The defense has trotted out a lot of wild theories about why Aaron McKinney killed Matthew Shepard. First, it was gay panic, as if Matthew Shepard, all five foot two inches and 105 pounds of them struck such terror into Aaron McKinney and his friend that they had to kill him. Then, when that was thrown out by the court, all of a sudden, it was robbery. Oh, well, what is it? Is it gay panic or robbery? It can't be both. Now, they're begging for your sympathy. Poor Aaron McKinney, not that bright, unhappy, uh, dabbling in drugs and alcohol. That man, lured Matthew Shepard to the middle of nowhere, tied him to a fence, then beat him senseless with a butt of a foot-long pistol, and now he has the gall to ask for your sympathy? It makes me tired. Foreman of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. We find the defendant, Aaron McKinney, guilty of felony murder. Yes, we were successful in achieving the verdict for which we fought for so long. However, the guilty verdict is only the first step. As long as people believe it's okay to hate, these crimes are going to keep on happening. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You okay? That was just hard to look at. Oh, you get used to her after a while. It gets easier. Why don't you sit down? You go out there? Where? Oh, God, no. What's the point of that? See what they did to him. I'm sorry, Dennis. I was in that courtroom. I know what they did to him. And I don't have to go to any stupid fence to see it. Emotional day, huh? Yeah. Can't be easy being separated. As long as you guys have been, you must be looking forward to spending some time together. Well, no, great. It isn't really, it really it's is not, not quite working out that way. Yeah, I get so many requests to speak about Matthew and 
company won't let me stay long. I'm supervising three crews out in Saudi Arabia. And Logan, how is he dealing with all this? Oh, he's much better. He's in college now. It takes his mind off his brother. Good. I guess we should get down to business. You remember when we talked about a statement where one of you gets up there, tells the jury about Matthew? Well, this is the time to really focus on it. Have you kept any of Matthew's things? Oh, everything. Why? Well, you guys should take the weekend, look through those things, pull your thoughts together, see if you could be ready for when they get back on Monday. Your words will guide them to the right decision. Just promise me we're going to get the death penalty this time. I believe we will. This isn't the Henderson trial, Dennis. It was never proven that he took part in the beating. With McKinney, we've got a confession. Hell, he even bragged about it. That's death penalty material. He won't be able to make a plea bargain. Okay. Just tell us what to say. Death penalty is an emotional thing. You've got to help the jury get to know your son, who he was, how much you loved him, how much it hurts knowing he's gone and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Oh. I know this is hard. I'm just so tired. It's a lot to say in a statement. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it's our child's life. stuff in order. What kind of order? It looks like it's all just thrown in. No, it's all sorted out. That's his childhood stuff. That's stuff from boarding school. And that's stuff from Denver. Oh, took me ages to figure it all out. So... Uh-huh. Just don't mess it up, OK? long gone. I know her. She'll understand. Trust me, no girl understands when a guy cancels a formal date at the last minute. We just hold still. I want to watch the game with Dad here. Don't well, forget about your shoes, Maddie. You can tell a man's pride by the way he shines his shoes. That one comes straight down from your grandfather. Oh, I hate this. He's going to love you. Ah, oh, here's a massage. Now give me back my lucky hat. Yeah. Don't think you're sneaking out of here with that. You'll get it back. My hat. Oh, God, yeah. Three pins. I know. Three. Kenny. Wouldn't you like to have 10 minutes with that bastard? Sitting there so smug in that courtroom like nothing could touch him. Just give me 10 minutes. Always considerate, always willing to share. He believed that there was nothing better in the world than a new friend, and judging someone was a waste of an opportunity. God, this sucks. Well, you were doing good. <laughs> Judy? You didn't hear what they said about him. Part of me thinks I always knew Matthew was gay. Maybe that's hindsight, but I am sure that things changed in high school. 
Life got harder for him. Oh, hold on, it's busted. No, it's from the outside, I'll get it. God, I can't believe I just did that. No, it, it's okay. No, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. No, no, I'm... I just... I'm, I, I just... I, I wasn't... I wasn't ready. You weren't ready? No, I... I mean, I... I thought you were going to say something. I mean, if you would have warned me, I... I, I could have... I guess we better get that. Mm -hmm. You stay. Hi. Cal. Sorry, I know What's it's wrong. Come on. We need to talk. The defense wants to talk about a sentencing agreement, a sort of a plea bargain. What'd you tell them? I told him to get the hell out of my office. Time to work out a please before the verdict, not after. That's when they said they wanted to talk to you. They're asking us for mercy? What the hell do they think we're gonna say? Did he show mercy when he beat my kid to death? I'm not telling you what to do. I just want it to be your choice. Are you sure we can get the death penalty? No doubt in my mind. They know it, and we do too. That's why they're begging now. Kid's afraid to die. Tell them no. Tell them I'm glad McKinney's afraid to die. I hope he's scared to death. to go hungry, Matthew. I don't mind sharing. I've got six of them in there. Oh, what, those scrawny little things? No thanks. I think I'll stick to my two big, fat, juicy ones. Ugh. Matthew, I've been offered a new job. Uh -huh. That'll be a big move. There's a new refinery going up? Yep. Fits in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you, are, you, are you serious? At first, I thought it was a crazy idea, too, to travel halfway around the world. But once you get used to the idea, there's a lot of good things about the Middle East. I don't know, Dad. I kind of like it here. Yeah. But I wouldn't have to travel so much. And you and Logan would get to finish high school in Europe. You'd see the world, Matt. New places, new people. The company will help us pay for it. You mean like a, like a boarding school? Would, would, would they have a theater program? These places are incredible. They have everything you love. Camping, the outdoors. 
I wanted to be here, you know. It's not like I had a choice. I had to work, I had to support the family. I know. I didn't expect it to be so hard. Come on, let's go to bed. Figure out in the morning. What art thou that usurpest this time of night, together with that fair and warlike form with which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven, I charge thee, speak. How oh, now, Horatio? No, Matt, you jumped lines again. Oh, well, he charged me to speak, so I spoke. Take it again. This time, be serious. Pablo, we've been through this a million times, OK? I think I got it. By heaven, I charge thee, speak. Ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> you can make a fool out of yourself in the play, too. Fine, I'll do it one more time, that is it. How now, Horatio, you tremble and you look pale. <laughs> what now? I'm sorry, I just, you, you're not a Horatio. You know what I mean? You're not exactly pale looking. Maybe a little tan, but you're not God, pale. You are such a screw off, you know that? Oh, you're such a screw off. This will help. There we go. Not you, not you. Oh, you are so dead. You are so dead. No, no, I'll go down. Matthew, get off of me. My shirt. No, Matthew, Matthew. Let Matthew, Matthew, Matthew we're even. Let me get, get off of me. Your other cheek. Let me get your cheek. Come on. Your other cheek. Even no, Matt, we're not. Matt, we even. <laughs> Matthew. Casey's a virgin. <laughs> Cut it out. I'm serious. <laughs> He's serious. <laughs> Later, serious. talk about the play. Sure, come on in. You know, I, I should have just stayed in Wyoming. I don't even know why I came here. Why don't we just sit down, Matthew? We can talk about this. It doesn't this. make sense, OK? It's wrong. I mean, I, I'm supposed to, it just, God, it doesn't make sense. Matthew, sit down. Pablo, you don't understand. I can't be here right now. Matthew, why don't you talk to me about it? In two days, the Shepherds will again face the jury to ask for the death penalty for Aaron McKinney. Moment of closure for Wyoming, and perhaps for the Shepherd family as well. The love Matthew found at boarding school wasn't the kind of love that Dennis or I have experienced, but it was equally valid. Huh. What? If I'm the jury, I just checked out. He was in love. It was part of his life. You want me to just ignore it? I just don't want them thinking he was some kind of press. He wasn't. I don't... I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying 
This is a Wyoming jury. He loved the outdoors. Why don't we just focus on that? So other people are homophobic and we just go along with it. What does that say? It says we want McKinney dead and there are certain rules we have to play by and we're going to play by them. I didn't make them up, so don't get mad at me. Fine, fine, whatever. We'll just take it out. Leave it out. What are we doing? We're going through everything he's ever done, trying to figure out what gets us the death penalty and what doesn't. Sick. Let's just finish this. I can't pick. I don't know what makes one life more valuable than another. I've got to mail these for the foundation. Do you have to mail that now? Maybe the love Matthew found at boarding school wasn't the same as what Dennis or I had experienced, but it was just as real and meaningful, and it made him happy. How now, Horatio? You tremble, and you look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you want? Before my God, I might not believe this without the true and sensible avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. Such was the very armor he wore when he, the ambitious Norway, combated. So too did he frown when he smote the sledded Polacks on the ice. It is strange. Dormitorio Kennedy. La Scola Fisher. Me I promesso on taxi quindici minuti, fa? Ooh, your Italian's getting good. It's OK. Va bene. Si, si. Dormitorio Kennedy. Va bene, grazie. Uh, Mom, I'm gonna need a little more spending money. We just sent you a check last week. Well, yeah, it's for spring break. The whole class is going to Morocco. Oh. I'll talk to your father. Isn't that the boy from the play? Yeah, mm. and it's Pablo. We hang out a lot. Oh. You now your father was really disappointed he couldn't be here, but we could only afford one ticket. Man, it's too bad he should come out sometime. There's great camping an hour from here. Oh, I'll tell him. <sighs> well, I guess I better go wait for that camp. Nice meeting. Take care. Be safe. Well. <laughs> hey, got your sprinkles. Mm. Make you feel better. Thank you. You know. I'm his mother. I should know what to say. Why is this so hard? Look at all you have been through. The trial and the foundation and being separated from Dennis. I, you have had zero time to grieve. I, I write about him all the time. I, I write my own speeches. I talk about him all the time. And why, why can't I write this? You know, maybe it's because People have been saying just stupid things about him, and I just want to set the record straight for once. JD, it's a statement. I, th I think you're putting too much pressure on yourself. What? I mean, how do you get up there and, 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 and tell people why they should kill someone? What do you say? What do you say? Anything. You get up there and read the phone book. It doesn't matter. That jury is going to give you the death penalty. Heck, the whole world is. You know that. Cal knows that. Even the defense knows it. But, you know, it's just, it's not that simple. Yes, it is. If you want the death penalty, all you have to do is ask for it. 
Well, that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Remember, we gotta get out of here. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Have a seat. Thanks. You're having trouble with the statement? When the trial started, it was really hard to sit there and listen to this. But I thought, you know, it's it's going to be fine because we have a strong case. We're going to win, and we'll get the death penalty, and then and, and it'll feel better. But I don't feel better. I feel worse. What can I do? I need to talk to the defense. What? Oh, I need to know what they have to say or figure out what I'm going to do. Judy, after what they said about your son... I only get one chance at this, and I've got to do it right. Dennis, he feels the same way? Just let me meet with him, okay? <sighs> you sure you want to do this? Hello, hello, Judy. We are so glad that you're here. Please. <clears throat> well, long trial, huh? Well, I'm sure that from where you were sitting, we probably seemed rather callous. No, I understand your job. Very gracious. Uh, but even so, I just want you to know how sorry we were for what happened. And there's not one of us here who doesn't, um, doesn't hate, hate what our client did. Just tell her the offer. Okay. Two life sentences, no possibility of parole. Self-imposed gag order. And he would also waive all rights to an appeal. No appeals? He agreed to that? Mm -hmm. She would never, ever have to hear from him again. What we've got here is a kid who is begging for his life. Like my son was. Judy. 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 Um, <clears throat> look, I'm not going to pretend that my client deserves your mercy, but there's something telling me that if you weren't at least open to the idea, you well, wouldn't be here. Don't presume to know what I want. You don't know me. You don't know my son. Matthew, cut it out. Oh, what? Oh, they don't even know us. Come on, sing with me. I love Pablo, and he loves... It's your turn. It's your part. Matthew, you've been doing this all night long, and in front of our friends. He's just very uncomfortable. We're a thousand miles from school. Anything goes here. Come on, man. Yes, but we have to go back there. Oh, so who cares? Okay, I'm tired of worrying about how everybody else thinks. Matthew. I love you. Shouldn't I be able to say so? That's not the way the world works, Matthew. People judge. 
So, so what are we supposed to do? Are we gonna hide for the rest of our lives? That's just stupid. That's reality, and I didn't make it up, so I don't want to hear any more about okay. it. Okay, 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 okay. I just sit here, like two little months. Love Pablo, yes. That's it. Sir. I'm going back oh, to the hotel. Oh, come on, no, I'm, I'm going, kidding. I'm Pablo. going back to the hotel. I'm joking. I'll whistle. I'll whistle. Come on, Pablo. No, you don't get it, Matthew. Get... I don't want to be here with you. Pablo, I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, come on, man. Pablo! I know, baby. <laughs> I wanted to tell you. I know. I know. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. Why was he so naive? Did we teach him better than that? I've been working on this all day. I'm not any closer. Why do we have to do it anyway? Why do we have to justify Matthew's life to a bunch of strangers? Why can't we just say, execute him and be done with it? When do you suppose he knew that he was gay? I mean, when do you suppose he first knew? I don't understand. I mean, what must it be like to keep something like that a secret from everyone you know? Poor man. What does that have to do with anything? Are we going to feel better when McKinney's dead? Yes. No, I don't know. That's not the point. We have a day to finish this. We can't figure out everything. We're so busy trying to get the death penalty, we haven't figured out why we're doing it. What if they just put him away and we never heard about him again? What the hell is going on? I met with the defense. You did it without me? I didn't agree to anything. I just wanted to hear what they had to say. Dennis, it's a good deal two consecutive life sentences. No possibility of appeal. Dennis, Dennis, stop. Please, stop. What? Are you punishing me? Why should I punish you? I don't blame you for anything. I just want to remember my son. Your son was murdered, and you're selling him out for a damn plea, because you think it would be easier. Easier? I want him dead just as much as you do. I've been dealing with this for over a year. I sat in that courtroom every day. I listened to every detail. 
every detail of what they did to our child. And then they said that he was asking for it. You think that was easy? No. No, it's not. But I'm sorry, this is not about us. It's about him. You take that plea, you take it by yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's my brother. Leave him alone. I mess him up. Catch you later. Take care, guys. Nice looking girl, Maddie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so proud of you. Thanks. You did good, son. Congratulations. Thanks. Well. Wow. Do I just meet up with us later? Uh, yeah, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> So that's him. Yep. Hmm. No, enough with the cute curl stuff. Oh, come on, he doesn't pay any attention to me anyway. You're supposed to be supportive. I support him, he knows that. I know. All right, I'll back off. The guy can dream, can't he? <laughs> Shima tells me your mom's taking you back to Wyoming. You're going back to UW. Big deal, huh? Look, uh, I gotta go, They're waiting for me. Wait. Can't you just explain? It's like you just evaporated after Morocco. Pablo. I gotta go. Matt. pipe went down 10 feet into the earth. We swear to God, Nora started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Maddie about that time. Oh, you remember. Gosh, you remember. Who cares, what? Mom? Maddie, that's not nice. You're talking to take up space, blah, 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 Don't blah, blah. Don't be that way, Matt. It doesn't mean anything. Like what? We're here for you. We're here for you, Maddie. They took my shoes. In Morocco, they took my shoes. I still can't understand why after Everything they had done, why they would do something like that. 
Honey, you don't have to talk about this anymore. It's all gonna be okay. It's, it's not going to be okay, Mom. I mean, if it was okay, do you think we would be here right now? We're trying to help. You're not trying to help. You're trying to make it safe. And it's not, and I... I, I can't keep telling you guys that without you freezing up all the time. God, I, I, I look at everyone else, Logan, everyone that I grew up with, and their lives just they, turn out so perfect, just so peachy. College, university, high school, good, good grades, good jobs. Not me. No way. Not the fag from Laramie. Matt, don't talk oh, about yourself that way, Matt. Don't that way, Matthew. That, that's how everybody thinks about me. That's what I am. I'm a queer. I'm, I'm a homo. All right, I'm a, we get I'm a, I'm a flaming faggot. All right. I Are do it with other guys, Dad. What do you have to say about that? That's my point. Everything I do, everything I go through, I have to do it on my own. I can't, I can't talk to you, I can't talk to anybody. You're supposed to love me, and yet yeah, you don't even know who I am. so bad do you like to drink yeah i like to drink the guy says well you're gonna love mondays that's open bar night here in hell do you like getting stoned you're gonna love wednesdays that's all the weed you can smoke day <laughs> and the devil flashes him a big smile and he says so are you gay <laughs> and the guy says hell no i'm no homo Ooh, that's bad you're gonna hate Fridays. <laughs> You're gonna hate Fridays. It's just a joke. I've been thinking about Matthew all day. Tonight, it was like he was right there beside me. I heard it the way he would have. And you know what? It isn't a joke. It's a little piece of hate shot like an arrow. My God, how did this kid do it? How many arrows struck him every day? They fall off you and me, Judy. I've even told a joke like that before. But they were shot right at him. My God. I never knew how he felt. I never knew at all. Thought I did, but I didn't. We've got to go for it, Judy. I'm more sure of that than ever. McKinney, somebody's son, too? Sure. But hard as it is, it's the single piece of justice we're going to get out of all this. It's an eye for an eye. It's the message we can send to the world that the jokes, the hate, Matt's death, it's unacceptable. And if we're not strong enough to demand justice, who will? See, we couldn't protect Matthew when he was alive. But we can make sure that Matt didn't die for nothing. Dennis and I decided that when college started, I'd move back to the States with Matthew. I guess it could be that subconsciously we felt like we'd failed him and needed to play catch up. He was so shaken by Morocco, someone had to help. You okay? What are you looking for? Honey? I can't, I, I can't find, I can't find my pills. First day back in school, I need my pills. the zipper? Um, I already looked in the zipper, it's not in the zipper. You okay? Yeah. You know, you really have to take these pills every day. The doctor said those panic no, attacks are not a joke. I know, Mom. Sweetheart, I mean. All right. 
Goodbye. Good luck. Hey, Sam, catch. He said he'd meet us here at 2 o'clock. Romy, you get called about every new boy toy in town. How do I get on this phone list? It's a school counseling center, not a dating service. Yeah, speak for yourself, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi. So you must be the new fag on the block. Yeah, you've got that telltale deer in the headlights look. Who, me? Come on in, we won't bite. Hey, Matthew, I'm Romy. Hi. Hi, Lance. Welcome to Queerville. Donnie. I am. How, how am I supposed to know what douche means? <laughs> and do I want a room with one? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so Saudi Arabia, Switzerland. Yeah, what are you, rich or something? Oh, hardly. Uh, it's my dad's job. How did you end up in Laramie? I'm, I'm from here. Bitch, that's the point. You should know better. Wh what are you still doing here if you hate it so much? Well, I came for the culture. I have a higher calling. Oh, please. I do. I'm an evangelist to the misguided cowboys. And your message? They can kiss my gay white ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you want to grab that for me? Hi. Hi. You must be Maddie's mom. I'm Donnie. <laughs> He's such a little princess. He takes longer in the bathroom than I do. Does anybody want to tell me where we're going? Going? We're going for a walk. I'm going to die. Come on, girl, get up here. No, thank you. I think I'm fine back here. Shut up. Yeah, shut up, faggot. Screw you, breeder. I look better than your wife. Why, go, you go! Come on. Go, hurry! Hurry, run! Right up! Come on! Hurry! Back up, back up, back up! Come on up, you little faggots! Come on! <laughs> go on. <laughs> what it? <laughs> Got a house full of trouble. Hi. Hi. Uh, um. Why? 
You know what these people are like. I mean, they see your friends coming and going, and then everybody's watching. The next thing, everybody's talking. I don't believe this. No, well, no, they don't. Everybody starts to talk. You're asking me to stay in the closet, Matthew? I'm just saying. In my own house? Say you should be very careful. Who you come out to? I just what? want you to be safe, Come Matthew. Hey. No, Matthew. Denver with you. You don't have to help me clean up. I can handle it. I can handle it myself. I don't mind. Whatever. I'm screwing this up, aren't I? Fatty, I think we should think about you finding your own apartment. I'm really not trying to run your life. Mom, I think I'm gonna go to Denver with Romaine. You have to finish school. You said it yourself. I have to remember where I am. They're never gonna accept me here. I don't think you're ready for that kind of a change. It's a big city. I know. With a community. With people like me. I'll finish school, I promise. I'll go back. And it's not like I'm going alone. Romaine will be there. Come on, please. Okay. When your child dies, you torture yourself with second guessing. Then you learn it's a waste of time, so you ask other questions. What happened in Denver was always a blank spot in our son's life. We knew in our gut it was painful, so we avoided it. But there is nothing more painful than life without Matthew. I needed to know what went on there. We both did. Is Romaine uh, uh, Patterson. Patterson here? Hi. Oh Hi. my God. Oh. Aren't you guys supposed to be in court tomorrow? What are you doing here? Mostly feeling really out of place. <laughs> we'd like to talk to you. No, we thought we'd like to buy you some lunch. That'd be great. <laughs> So after he got to Denver, I thought he'd call me immediately, but I didn't hear from him for the longest time. And then, out of the blue, he shows up here insisting that I have to come to his new place and check it out. So I went with him, and oh, you should have seen him. He was so proud. He made a home for himself without any help from anyone. This is Gomez. Consider Gomez a dorm. Hey, man. Here it is. Wow. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Not bad. <laughs> so? Very cool. Very, very cool. But you could use a few more bottles. Yeah, I'm working on that. Matthew, I thought you were going to get a place in the district. Yeah, maybe a closet. So it's not the best location. It's a great apartment, it's close to the district, and most important, it's mine. Isn't that great? 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Seriously, just be careful. This isn't the greatest part of town. My God, you're my mother disguised as a lesbian. <laughs> and what happened hmm. afterwards? Well, he had to deal with the crap that we all have to deal with. Excuse me. Uh, there's no price on this. Uh, I think this is a store special. Uh -huh. $11.98 for the small bottle. There'll be tax on that. You know what? Um, I think you're better off saving your money. Huh? Bottle of calcium will do the same thing, and it's two bucks. Thank you. You're welcome. It was $11. And you sold a $2 bottle of calcium. Do the math. People had no sense of business at all. It was just one person. She was paying in pennies. Listen, just go to the stock room and stack boxes or something until you figure out if you want to do this job or not. I, I do want to do this. I'm good at it. I sell more of those things than anybody. You're asking me to rip off old people. I'm asking you to stop acting like such a pansy. Think you could handle that for eight hours a day? I need some air. In Matt. Guys, that's how we moved in next door. Yeah, to the homo. Please go around with us like a rat. Shut up with that bag in there for you, faggot. Shut up. something for you. It's for your apartment. Hmm. A fairy for a fairy. It's an angel. That was gross. I quit my job. Oh, great. Good decision. Romaine, the place was run by a moron. I wasn't gonna take his crap. <laughs> Maddie, the world isn't gonna roll over for us. The key is to stay in the game and to keep your dignity. Did you notice the emphasis on staying in the game? You know, this place was supposed to be better. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't know how to act like a queer. Lighten up. It'll turn out OK. I'll make you a free cat. An angel for an angel.
Besides Matt, leave a message. Matthew, it's Mom. <sighs> hey, Mom. Are you there? Pick up if you are. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about you, sweetie. We haven't heard from you in a while. Call us. Collect. We love you. I'm great. I'm just tired. Tired. We always regretted not being able to stay closer to Matt while he was in Denver and we were in the Middle East. We came back to try to help him restart his life. Is he okay? Yeah, he'll be fine. Hey, Maddie. It was like he'd been to that really dark place and came out the other side knowing what he wanted. And you know, after all the crap he went through, what was it? You know, he wanted to help people. And he would have done it, too. Like, you know, the day he moved out? Okay, first of all, that was like... one of the saddest days of my life. Going back to Laramie? That's hard to believe I'd leave this paradise. Huh? And they accepted your enrollment at the school? Yep. School starts on Monday. Well, it's about time he started listening to me. I owe you my entire life, Your Highness. <laughs> you know, every journey starts with a single step. That's me. Nice one, Maddie. <laughs> you found your epiphany in a fortune cookie. It's true. That's why I'm going to major in political science, become a diplomat, travel around the world, help people, make the world a better place, you know? So later on, I'm all crying and all, and then the phone rings. So of course, it's Maddie, right? He forgot his jacket, so I've got to go back to his place to pick it up for him. And this guy, his neighbor, who's been basically driving him crazy for months, is standing out in the hallway with this glass angel that Matthew left behind for him. Why'd you leave this at my door? I didn't. Matthew did. Hmm. Look what it does. Yeah, he thought you'd like it. He was just staring <laughs> at it like, I so don't deserve this thing. You know, it was perfect. I got it. it was like Matthew had the last word. And it was a good one. Thanks. I'll be there tomorrow. Bye, Judy. Bye. He was a good kid. Yeah. He was just like you. The world hurts you and you try to make it better. He was like you too. You know, the world hits me and I hit back. I'm thinking about what you said. And I think I'm ready to, you know, start telling some people. Oh yeah? What about your family? No, they'd kill me. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, at first. You know, you're gonna think the whole world hates you. But you'd be surprised who ends up standing in the corner. Trust me on that. Hey, 
glass of beer, please? I need to go out there. I need to see it. I need to see the fence. And I'm not sure I could do it without you. This is dirty. Don't touch it. Hey. Thanks. You know it's okay. I mean, we're gay too. Oh, God. I, mean, I, I thought you guys were gonna jump me. No, what? Well, you, you followed me in here and I just thought. Well, we're not gonna tell you out there. No, no, I, I guess not. Uh, hey, listen, it was nice meeting you guys. Take off. Yeah, yeah, okay then. What, you leaving already? It's early. Yeah, you know, I got class tomorrow and I'm tired. College boy, right? Good for you, man. Uh, hey, you know, we could give you a ride home if you want. Really? Yeah, it's not a big deal or anything. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Why did he go with him, Jerry? He spends his whole life looking for a place where he can fit. He finally finds it in time to a damn fence. I keep playing it over and over in my head. All the things we did wrong. All the things I wish I'd done differently. But none of it matters. Just kill him in the end.
He's beautiful. I didn't expect that. I need McKinley dead, Judy. I know. He deserves to die. But the tribute to Matthew's life shouldn't be McKinney's death. Our son was beautiful. And when you have something beautiful, you should show it to the world. You should use it to give something, not take something away. I want to take the plea. I can't. things about Matthew and you're gonna want to respond but remember there's a big difference between what people say and what things are so your plugs in <laughs> and keep smiling remember you're Matthew's angels Mr. Shepard, the prosecutor informs me of your desire to address the jury. Now, you understand that you are under no obligation to do so. But if that is still your desire, you may address the court at this time. My son, Matthew, officially died on October 12, 1998. But he actually died the Wednesday before when you... You, Mr. McKinney, with your friend, Mr. Henderson, left him out there to die by himself. But he wasn't alone. He had his longtime friends with him. The beautiful night sky, the daylight, and the sun to shine on him one last time. He had the smell of Wyoming sagebrush and the scent of pine trees from the snowy range. And he had God. I feel better knowing he wasn't alone. Our lives will never be the same. 
We miss Matt terribly. We think about him all the time at odd moments when little things remind us of him. When we walk by the refrigerator and see pictures of him, and at special times of the year, like the first day of classes at UW, or the opening day of hunting season, we always wonder what would have happened, what would he have become, how would he have changed his corner of the world to make it better? Matthew was not my gay son. He was my son who happened to be gay. And I was proud of him. He became a symbol, some say, a martyr putting a boy next door face on hate crimes. That's fine with me. He would be thrilled to know his death helped others. Mr. McKinney, Judy and I believe that there are incidents and crimes that justify the death penalty. And even Matthew would agree that this is one of them. My son died because of your ignorance and intolerance. I can't bring him back, but I can do my best to make sure this never happens again. I believe in the death penalty. I want nothing more than to see you die. However, this is a time for healing. This is a time to show mercy to one who refused to show mercy. Every time you celebrate Christmas or the 4th of July, remember, Matt isn't. Every time you wake up, remember, Matthew won't. Every time you breathe, remember, Matthew doesn't. You who robbed us. Of something very precious. And I will never forgive you for that. Mr. McKinney, I give you life in memory of one who no longer lives. May it be a long life. And may you thank Matthew every day for it. Young boy just starting out 
So much history in this landscape So much confusion, so much doubt Been there drinking on that front porch Angry kids, mean and dumb Looks like a pain in that blue skyline God hates facts where we come from Western skies don't make a right I'm up the grave don't make no sense I seen a scarecrow So who cares? 